To the Point with Michael Williams. Good morning. Anti-Semitism, the focus of a big town hall meeting this week in our community. I was the moderator of that event held at the South County Civic Center here in Palm Beach County, a panel from across the community, from Sheriff Rick Bradshaw to education leaders to leaders in the Jewish community. And I had a chance to talk with them over the course of an hour and a half in a seminar and an ability for everybody to come together to talk about anti-Semitism and how to fight it. We streamed it live on WPTV.com and we'll tell you about that later. You can find it on our website. We'll talk more about that. The county streamed it as well. All this spearheaded by the mayor of Palm Beach County, Greg Weiss, as you look at some of the participants, including familiar face here from the Urban League, Patrick Franklin and many others. I'm joined now by Lonnie Wilk, Deputy Regional Director of the Anti-Defamation League, the Florida Regional Office. We appreciate you being with us. To pick up on the conversation that we had yesterday in front of about 250, 300 people, the sad thing to me was when I asked the audience, how many of you have been touched or felt anti-Semitism uh, directed or indirectly come your way in the last couple of years? I'd say at least half, maybe more of the hands in that room went up. Talk about anti-Semitism. First, define it, because both for the Jewish audience yesterday and the non-Jewish audience, we thought that was an important place to start. So anti-Semitism is the animus or hatred of Jews or the Jewish people uh, or the Jewish state of Israel, usually stemming from conspiracy theories, uh, historical tropes that tend to frequently find their manifestations in modern day uh, uh, issues and instances, and they're directed uh, towards Jews as individuals, as representatives of a community at large as well. Talk about the historical tropes. So some of the tropes uh, from history are religiously based uh, in uh, uh, deicide charges, as an example. Uh, some tropes go to uh, conspiracy theories about Jews having uh, power, control, uh, uh, or influence uh, un undue or unfitting. Uh, and those tropes have uh, r uh, historical reference points in events or um, instances in which there was an effort to get Jews to be looked at as an outsider. And so these, con in contemporary standards, we've seen these tropes uh, manifest uh, towards the Jewish community in the U.S., towards the Jewish community around the world, towards the Jewish state of Israel. And we have seen these proliferate, especially since the advent of the internet age, the social media apps, where ideas of bigotry and prejudice can be amplified uh, significantly to mass audiences. Talk about uh, how it is manifesting itself in our community and really beyond, but let's focus on what we've been reporting of late, of increased incidences of anti-Semitism from old, ugly, vulgar language, uh, stuff tossed into people's yards. Uh, well, one day somebody putting something up on a screen in West Palm Beach mm -hmm. that was uh, anti-Semitic. Talk about the manifestations of what you're seeing and the spike you're seeing in anti-Semitic incidents. Yeah, so we've seen extremists uh, and extremist groups and networks look to normalize anti-Semitism and proliferate uh, anti-Semitic expressions uh, throughout our state and throughout the country. Um, ADL tracks and records uh, instances of anti-Semitic incidents, including harassment, vandalism, and assaults. And we are at record levels in the United States. Uh, we are going to be releasing our audit of anti-Semitic incidents for 2022 in the weeks ahead. But uh, I can tell you from 2020, we jumped 40%. Now, in 2020, it, it should be noted, we were in the midst of a pandemic. At the outset of the pandemic, many of us said, in, uh, within my organization said, well, we're gonna see anti-Semitic incidents drop massively because there's less of an, uh, an opportunity for people to have interpersonal connections. So there would be naturally less of an opportunity for people to express bigotry. And we saw the exact opposite, especially here in Florida. Do we see anti-Semitism tend to spike in periods of economic uncertainty, economic dislocation, social uncertainty, mm -hmm. social dislocation? Some could argue social media is creating yeah. its own dislocation, but is that a trend that we tend to see that they combine in direct proportion? 
No, I don't know about direct proportion, but we definitely do see that when there are times of instability, economic, socio socioeconomic, social instability, political instability, people tend to look for an outsider to blame for their ills. And in many cases, historically and today, the Jewish community has been seen as an outsider that can be targeted. And so we saw in 2021, after that 40% increase in Florida of anti-Semitic criminal and non-criminal incidents, we, in 2021, we saw a 50% increase on top of that. We were already at record levels, and then we increased beyond there. Uh, right before we went to air, you, I, and my uh, dear friend and colleague uh, on To The Point, our News Channel 5 political analyst, Brian Crowley, was talking. He brought up an interesting point. You tend to think of people uh, pushing this ugliness, this anti-Semitism, uh, neo-Nazis, Holocaust deniers. That, that can be true, but that's not the entire picture because at the seminar yesterday at the town hall, I heard you talk very passionately about the fact that social media is driving young people who may or may not have a full awareness of what they're doing, but are driving this narrative, even if they're not fully aware of what they're talking about. But to Brian's point and to that concern brought up, bring that together for us. Yeah, so we are seeing significant increases in uh, apps, uh, social media apps, uh, gaming and online gaming even, where uh, students, young children, are encountering expressions of bigotry, of bullying, identity-based bullying, uh, uh, most significantly. Um, at record levels, and we all know that when there are expressions of extremism, hate, or bigotry in our society coming from leaders, celebrities, or whatnot, there will be a, a, a response. There will be a response from ADL, there will be a response from like-minded leaders and whatnot. What is a little more difficult for all of us to deal with is when there are interpersonal expressions of anti-Semitism or bigotry. Um, and for students, that is significantly manifesting uh, on social media and online. And so when we, look at, uh, uh, when we look at the issue of online bullying and online cyberbullying, we know that many young people are not necessarily identifying or responding or flagging to social media or online gaming companies the bigotry that they are experiencing or witnessing. Uh, and we know that uh, companies, that policymakers, that law enforcement, that legislators need to have an understanding of the extent of the problem in order to create policy solutions. So it's a problem that we see in the high profile way. Former President Trump uh, was, was criticized sitting down uh, with uh, celebrities at. Uh, at Mar-a-Lago, who voiced anti-Semitic views, who have uh, anti-Semitic stances, but we see it also at levels that we don't talk about typically, from school children on school children. And I think as people talk and look at this, the question is, uh, how worried are you that it continues to only get worse? And then it begs the question, what can we do about it? So we're, we're definitely concerned, uh, and we saw a number of instances, to your point, um, uh, regarding um, uh, Ye, formerly known mm -hmm. as Kanye West, after his diatribes, we saw a proliferation of incidents throughout the country referencing him or uh, uh, referencing his diatribes, and including uh, among school children. So we're definitely concerned that when there is a expression of anti-Semitism or any form of bigotry, when there is a vacuum, it, there is an, a sense of acceptance and legitimacy. So, so how, do we, how do we fight it? What are, the, what are the concrete tools and what is the larger societal message? Because again, we heard yesterday, it said every, this has to be an all-in, people coming off the yeah. sidelines and saying it may not be my group being affected today, but hate tends to be insidious and it may affect uh, those of the Jewish community right now, but it very easily can spill over into every other community and otherism can become uh, something that is all encompassing. So what are specific tools you give people watching this broadcast to fight it? What's the larger message you wanna leave? So there's a few things. One, call out hate and bigotry frequently and clearly. When there is a vacuum, there is an air of legitimacy to any expression of bigotry. Uh, expressions of bigotry are usually intended to inflict fear and intimidation throughout an entire community. So it requires a significant, clear, and whole of community approach in response. So 
everyone should call out anti-Semitism or bigotry clearly. In addition, report anti-Semitic or bias-motivated incidents when they occur to law enforcement when appropriate to ADL uh, at ADL.org slash report incident. Say that one more time. You can report an incident to ADL at ADL.org slash report incident. And I'd be remiss, PBSO Sheriff uh, Rick Bradshaw yesterday yep. was emphatic that people need to call if they feel they're victims of anti-Semitism. He said, it, we, we need the community's help if we're gonna dig in on the law enforcement side of this, but go ahead and continue. So in addition, advocate to your elected officials, to your local community, state, and federal elected officials, and make sure that they understand that you are speaking up not only for yourself, but for all that you see targeted by bigotry or expressions of fear and intimidation in your community. Uh, make sure that they understand your values. It is more important that our elected officials understand the values that we all share uh, and that we all must stand up against bigotry we sometimes get lost in the permutations of how we identify politically. We, when there is, as an example, when there is an expression of extremism from the right, it is almost a knee-jerk reaction. We know that the extreme left will respond, but it takes a little more courage for any of us, and vice versa, I should add, and we, but it takes more courage for any of us to say the group that I identify with, I'm not gonna stand for bigotry within the, my group. My group, if I am a part of it, will not accept anti-Semitism or any form of bigotry, so I am gonna stand against it. We need to um, also make sure that we educate our children and empower them to stand up against bigotry they experience, but also act as allies for each other. Eloquently said and passionately expressed, and I cannot emphasize enough, we appreciate your time, and I highly urge you to go to WPTV.com. It was a broad-ranging hour and a half discussion on this very topic, a lot of resources. I mentioned Sheriff Rick Bradshaw, I mentioned your organization and others. I encourage you to go to that site, WPTV.com, the To The Point page for what was a wide-ranging discussion. We'll have you as a guest again, but Mr. Wilk, thank you for at least helping frame the issues for us on To The Point. Thank you very much, and thank you again for moderating yesterday's program. Uh, my honor. Governor Ron DeSantis counting down to his launch of a bid for the White House. Every sign pointing that way next. <laughs>